on Hulu I watched For Your Eyes Only. I like this Bond film. Uh, the Bond song here, also called For Your Eyes Only, you do actually hear this in places. If I go eat at Arby's, I hear this all the time. I think it's by Sheila Easton. This one, you actually see the performer singing the song in the title sequence. So there's this uh, British spy vessel that accidentally pulls in a torpedo. No, uh, well, a mine. It pulls in a mine and goes up. Uh, well, sinks. And they have this device called the ATAC device that helps guide the Polaris missiles from their nuclear subs. This was stuff that was kind of mentioned in... Uh, the, the spy who loved me. And so, um, Mon has to go figure out where, where his stuff's at. Well, they couldn't go looking for it because it was on a, on a mission in, like, Serbia or some shit. And it was like, they needed this Greek guy, this archaeologist, to use his diving craft to find it. They were going to work the mission through him, unofficially. Well, he gets assassinated. And his daughter survives, and she's on revenge. Uh, Melina... Oh man, I forgot the name of the actress. I think it's Carolina something. She's got a unique look to her. I thought she was pretty cool here. Um, this is your first taste of Bond in the 80s. There are some nice little bits here uh, where, where things look uh, look fairly 80s. You got some sun, sunset golden hour photography there where she's with her parents, uh, even when they get taken out. And uh, there's a hitman she goes after, Bond knows about. And they're both going after him at the same time. And she hits him with a bolt. That's like her weapon is this crossbow. Or is it not a crossbow? It's an underwater bolt gun kind of thing. Or uh, is it? Well, which is it? Uh, anyways, Bond and her make an escape. They were going to get into Bond's turbo esprit, but it blows up because the bad guys tampered with it. And it has a security system that blows up if anybody does anything to the window some security. That's a little bit of overkill, but whatever. So, uh, they hop into her Citroen du Chabot, and Bond's, like, very reluctant to get into this. Uh, Roger Moore uh, gives this, like, face. But they have a cool chase scene in, like, tiny little uh, hillside. Miniature roads. They tip over. Locals help them up. Bond has to speak like uh, Greek or Italian or some shit to them and get them motivated. I forgot what it was. I think they're in Italy. Then they have to go hang out in, uh, in a ski resort. Find out about the guy who hired the hitman to kill the guy who was looking for the device. The ATAC. And this is where the, you know, it's interesting because we don't get a straightforward villain. We're led to believe one guy is but he, he's actually playing Bond against his enemy. And then those two team up and realize who the actual villain is. And of course it's going to be the creepy old guy who is sponsoring a figure skater, BB. I think she's like put in there to be like 16, but she's actually like 23. She looks damn young. She looks too young for Roger Moore. Roger Moore really started looking old around... The Spy Who Loved Me. I mean, he looked okay in, in The Man with the Golden Gun, despite being like three years older than Connery, as strangely as it is. Looked younger than him. But he's looking pretty haggard here. And it, you kind of cringe thinking he's going to hook up with Melina. But, uh, you know, they're on their mission. They, they, sh they take you through all these different Olympic events. There's ice hockey fight. There's a uh, ski jump fight. You know, all this stuff. The BB's into this guy who is a cross-country skier and then he shoots guns or shit. Whatever they call that event. And my knees hurt so much. I've been jogging a lot today. This is like hour two. And my knees are giving out, guys. But, uh, you know, speeding this along. Bond, uh, finds out this guy's bad. He's making his escape. He has this, like monastery up on this mountain area. Bond has to do some mountain climbing. Goes in there with Molina and the, the guy he thought was the bad guy. Takes him out. Well, before this, there was this chick he had to hook up with get some information. Countess Liesel. I'm only mentioning this because she's married to Pierce Brosnan and she died of like cancer. And she's actually older than Pierce Brosnan. 
So I just thought I'd mention that. So uh, they, they go and have their fight bit. There's actually a lot that goes on underwater in this one. And the underwater sequences are pretty cool. And you get the idea that Melina is like quite apt to being underwater. Like she does she does a lot of stuff without oxygen and shit. It's it's like uh, you know she's a useful Bond girl. But uh, you know they take out the bad guys, and actually it's the rival that finishes the guy off because Bond had told Melina, hey, you go and you pursue this revenge angle, prepare to dig two graves. Well, this guy kind of saves her from doing that. And since he survives, he's going to become BB's new sponsor. And the, really, the only thing that drags this movie down is BB. She's annoying as hell. Zero help. You can say that Goodnight was some help in finding Scaramanga. BB, no. Uh, but I do enjoy this one. It has some good visuals. Uh, the, the chase sequence. Hell, the movie starts off with Bond getting rid of Blofeld, finally. And the guy playing Blofeld here was Lobot in The Empire Strikes Back. And it's a really cool scene because Bond's on a helicopter that's remote control. And he, he loses control of it, of course. But uh, he gains it back. And the, the helicopter's like in this industrial park. It's diving all over the place in ways you'd never see a helicopter behave in a movie today. And it's cool for that reason. But um, he, he gets uh, the wheelchair up of uh, Blofeld and drops him in a coal stack. It's there you go. It's a little comedic, but I you know I think it's fitting enough. This is one of uh, Roger Moore's better ones. I give Your Eyes only three out of four stars.